All right, welcome in Aggie fans. This is the Aggie Up podcast. I'm Isaac Draxler. We're actually uh, welcomed to uh, welcome to have uh, Brian Phillips and Seth Tuba with us as well tonight. So thanks for listening. Um, I was actually just looking at a few um, a few different ways to listen to the uh, to the show. Um, I even um, downloaded a new app called Castbox. Um, so you have Stitcher, you have Spreaker, you have Castbox, you have iTunes, iHeartRadio is is kind of our primary one. So keep listening to us. Go to iHeartRadio um, if you want to listen live. It's through the Spreaker app or Spreaker website. So um, definitely check that out. Keep uh, keep listening. We appreciate it. Um, so this episode we will be. Looking back at the um, at the Arkansas State game, and we're looking forward to the Air Force game. So this week is, um, you know, homecoming. So everybody's excited about that. It's the start of Mountain West play. No longer in the uh, in the preseason. We're ready to get the uh, the regular season started. You re- you guys ready to get the regular season started or what? Let's get going. All right. I'm ready. So let's uh, let's look back first. Um, I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions about the Arkansas State game. Um, I guess first we'll start with you, Brian. Are you freaking out as much as most people, or you you look at it like, well, it's a 14 point win. Aggies won the game. Move on. Let's uh, let's go go forward. I felt that the defense was really solid once again. Um, they let a few. They had a few lapses in the second half. Obviously, the Arkansas State decided to take advantage of our weakness when it comes to covering the seam route, and they turned them into some real gains right there up the middle of the field. Uh, we did get beat once outside for one of the long touchdowns, but Arkansas State really ended up in a position where they had to throw the ball and we kind of let him get away with a little bit. Uh, Dallin Levitt picked that one clean. Uh, the pass interference that was called on that was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Mm-hmm. He, he picked that interception and, and should have been credited with that, but that kept the drive alive. If I remember right, that was on third down. And then just a play or two later, they got another pass interference call to keep that drive alive. And that led to their first score and kind of gave them a little momentum. So they found that weakness in the in the seam route. I think they finally found a quarterback with Justice Hansen. Uh, I, did, I did like his play for the most part. Uh, defensively, Levitt, like I mentioned already, extremely solid. Brock Carmen, very solid. Career high 12 tackles, one and a half tackles for loss, picked up a sack. Uh, Mountain West Defensive Player of the Week, honors for him. Uh, John Trell Rockmore had an interception. So I, I think the defense was, for the most part, pretty solid. Offensively, Still struggling, especially with the pass game. I I continue to get a feeling that Kent Myers is more or less regressing from where he was even as recently as last season. The only time he ever really looked like the Kent Myers of old was on that very last drive where he kept the drive alive twice with big plays with his feet. He only finished 11 of 25 for 136 yards. He had that score to Ron Quavian Tarver. And he threw an interception. So uh, I would really like to see Kent be much, much, much more consistent. I can't say enough about Ron Quavian Tarver. Uh, He's really starting to impress me. He's really jumped in. He didn't get here till midsummer. He caught three balls for 28 yards and a score, but it's the way he's just worked his way up the depth chart. I think by the end of the year, he's going to be one of those guys that I don't think we're going to be able to stop talking about, to be honest. 
Wyatt Houston turned in another good night, three catches for 24 yards. Tony Lindsay, I felt, was really solid. If I remember right, he finished with 98 yards rushing. Uh, the offensive line did a good job of opening holes. For the most part, for Lindsay, I still think that there's work there. I think you guys will be able to agree with that. But before I turn the time over to Seth, I just want to give a shout out, shout out to Brock Warren. He knocked down both of his field goal attempts, 38-yarder and a 30-yarder. I know the special teams have been getting a lot of crap after the USC game. You know, Brock shook off the miss at USC and came out and knocked down both of his attempts and left the game probably with a little bit of confidence for a change. So as far as the kicking game goes on special teams, you know, the place kicking game, I should say, uh, shout out to them. They did a solid job. Go ahead, Seth. Um, I agree with everything Brian mentioned. Uh, there's three things that I was just going to talk about real quick um, about Tony Lindsay since that was kind of the last thing you talked about. Um, yeah, he had a really solid game. Um, I, the more reps he gets, I think the more patient he's going to become uh, running the ball. I think he just if he just holds back just a little bit and let things develop in front of him just the way our scheme is, I think that'll benefit him a little bit more. I mean, on that touchdown run, you can see he kind of let things develop, and then he just shot right through. And you know, um, but I was happy the way he performed. Um, with being up twenty-four to nothing, um, I'm I, and it, it has been the it's been the the pattern or the I don't know whatever you want to call it of the team for the last couple of years, we get a big lead and for whatever reason we play, I mean, we're sitting there and we're, we're, we're playing not to lose. We're not playing to win anymore. Right. And it really frustrated me. I mean, that second half was about as, or second quarter was about as dominant of a quarter on the defensive side of the ball as I've seen, you know, from even the great defenses that Utah State's had. I mean, that was special. That was that was something to to watch and to come out and it seems like we come out in the second half flat for whatever reason too. Um, I mean, those guys, my, my seats are really close to the sidelines um, on the West side. And those guys, I Arkansas state, I've never seen a group of guys more I don't want. I don't even know how to say it nicely, but I mean, it was it was it was ridiculous. I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous the way they're acting, and I've laid off on the. You know, I I don't do that. I don't get into it with the players or anything like that. But I mean, there was a lot of jabbering going back and forth with fans and everything, and a lot of their their coaches just bought into it, you know, and let them do it, and it and it shows you with a team that has 18 penalties, you know. Um, and I think that's what really bit them, you know, in the first the first half was all the penalties they had. Um, as far as our defense goes, I was, you know, throughout the whole game, they stepped up when they needed to step up. But I really wish when, you know, the team has their foot on somebody's neck, they don't, you know, that's when you don't let them have a chance. Don't just completely dominate the game. You were completely dominating before. And like you mentioned, that interception by Levitt, I think that was on the second down, actually. I think it was the second play of the, the second half that it was a clean pick. And, you know, momentum obviously swung their way. They went down and got a touchdown out of that drive. And um, for whatever reason, our our offense just it just can't click. And I don't know um, if we're waiting on receivers to step up. And this is the third thing that I kind of wanted to mention um, with the receivers. I think I saw – Colson Green come in three times and every single time was a shot downfield. And if I'm noticing that in the stands as an armchair, you know, spectator, you know the coaches are seeing that you know, on the defensive side of the ball. When he comes in, they're going to take a shot, you know. And I don't know if, I mean, he's got the speed, he's the long, you know, he's our shot guy, but, I mean, if everybody expects it, I just wish that we'd be a little bit more creative. I mean, it seems like we got five plays we run, and 
that's what we stick to and that's what we run. And it just, I don't know, it gets a little unnerving sometimes just watching it. And um, I'm happy with the win. You know, a win's a win. But when you're up 24 nothing at home um, with a team acting like that, and I know Matt and their head coach, Anderson, go way back and everything. But as far as, I, you know, my opinion, you're not friends when you're coaching against each other. I mean, that's, you know, you throw that aside and business is business and you get to it. So I'm kind of glad we didn't sit on that last 50 seconds. I'm glad we punched it in. Um, but I just wish that when you're up big like that, we would find a way just to just, you know what, let's end this right now. Give them no hope. Give whoever you're playing no hope. Um, so that's basically all I got to talk about Arkansas State. Yeah, so that leaves the uh, the popular opinion of play calling to me, and um, I will I will touch on the uh, the defense though first because I think the defense did play well. I think the uh, especially the rush defense. I mean, Arkansas State is a pretty good running team uh, traditionally, and and they have some pretty good running backs and a pretty veteran offensive line. So. To, help, to hold them to 70 yards and, and really stop them every time the Aggies knew they were they were going to run the ball, obviously when they got in the red zone, when they got into you know third and short and, and everything, the Aggies stopped them. I mean, basically every, every time. I mean, there was very few um, times that Utah State didn't come up with that big stop. So that was huge. Obviously, going into the Air Force game, I'm watching that even more closely because – Air Force, um, you know, you're going to have to to have a good rush defense. You're going to have to to play well. The the linebackers are going to have to grow up and and play well. So, I think um, I think that'll be huge this week against Air Force. And I think they have a lot of confidence, a lot of momentum going into this game. And I really think, I mean, whether you well, whether you want to whether you want to say it was. All the uh, you know the bad calls and, and everything. Obviously, you could blame the refs to a certain extent, um, but to a certain extent, I I blame the uh, the the offense for going three and out for eight straight. Well, I, I'm exaggerating, but they had really no significant drives other than one deep pass to to Rashad Lewis for eight straight possessions. That was eight possessions straight that the Aggies really didn't do anything on offense. So what do you expect your defense to do? You expect your defense just to go out there eight straight times and shut down um, Arkansas State's offense? No. They're going to get tired. They're going to break down. They're going to get more. You know, they, Arkansas State even got some short fields and, and some big plays and, and different things and help from the refs. But, you know, the, the defense – I, I don't think you can ask your defense to do any more than, than that. Unfortunately, it's kind of, um, it seems like just okay to the to some of the coaching staff, or, or I, I don't know. I, I, can't, I really can't figure it out because in those eight possessions, um, you know, part of the possessions were, it's not like they were running three straight times, you know, on the ground, and they weren't throwing the ball three straight times either. You know, they were trying to mix it up. But I feel like, um, you know, they were switching running backs and Tony Lindsay wasn't in there all the time. And and if you look at the, the the three games so far and look at the play calling, was there any difference between the three games? I feel like it was the exact same play calls at the exact same time. And this is my point on play calling. Everyone wants to, to blame the play caller, right? Everyone... Everyone, you know, anytime a play doesn't work, it's the play caller's fault. Well, I'm different. I, I don't blame the, the play caller. I don't blame Matt Wells for making the, the wrong play call if it doesn't work because sometimes it's the players. There's, there's a lot of things that happen. But one thing I expect from the play caller is to use, use the guys the best way possible, use your weapons, and then I expect... Well, two more things. I expect you to, to kind of make some adjustments and maybe realize, oh, well, this other team probably knows I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run this, um, you know, the, the first position of the game. I'm, 
I'm not going to come out and just run a bunch of screens just for